Hello Fight fans and welcome to Fight News Now Extra. My name is John Pollock and this is where you get caught up on everything happening in mixed martial arts. Today we'll chat about what's going on in the flyweight division with a number of contenders emerging, a big middleweight bout is being put together, and we'll let you know why Kung Lee is the A-lister on the Macau card Saturday. Kung Lee and Michael Bisping are set to headline this Saturday's return to Macau for the UFC in middleweight action. Kung Lee joined me this week on the MMA Report to chat about the fight, his long layoff, and the recent comments Michael Bisping had made towards him, with Kung Lee taking exception to Bisping's career outside of fighting. He's just been commenting on, on the movies I've done, and, you know, they're like B movies or C movies, whatever he says, but... You know, if you look on his IMDb page, like the movie he's done, compare them to mine. I mean, it's almost like he's contradicting himself. But, you know, that's like a big thing for you. You know, I, I, I look like he's an angry person. You know, he's not happy uh, about something. He's not happy with a part of his life. And, you know, he, you know, he, he has to find someone to, you know, take it out on me. You know, I'm not a punching bag because, you know, I'm definitely going to hit back. And I'm going to hit back very hard. And that full interview is up at FightNetwork.com in the podcast section. On UFC Tonight this week, Daniel Cormier was the one breaking some news, reporting that a middleweight bout is in the works for teammate Luke Rockhold to fight Lyoto Machida. Rockhold last fought in April with a very impressive inverted triangle win over Tim Boach, while Machida last fought champion Chris Weidman back at UFC 175 in a thrilling five-round bout with Weidman getting the decision. And flyweight Juicy A. Formiga recently spoke to MMAFighting.com about his recent win over Zach Makovsky from this past weekend. Following the victory, Formiga is hopeful of moving into the title mix at 125 pounds and told the outlet he would love to avenge a 2011 loss to Ian McCall from the Tachi Palace Fights promotion where McCall took a unanimous decision not. If that fight were to happen, it would likely lead to the winner gaining a title fight at 125 pounds. And I'm here with Robin Black. We've got two big UFC cards coming up this, well, big is a imperative word. Maybe you don't need to say that, but hey, Kung Lee bringing in the IMDB argument with Michael Bisping saying, hey man, you wanna criticize my movies? Let's put our IMDB pages up together. And I will have you know that of the two of us, one of us here at this desk, does have an IMDb page. I actually did some research here. There's like nine Robin Blacks, half of them women. Yeah, but three of them are actually me, and they have just put my, oh, uh, my actor credits so on So you, you have the stamp on the yeah. Robin Black brand. I guess I win the IMDb uh, contest, but I mean, between Michael Bisping and Kang Lee, who wins the I DJ'd more shows contest? Like, is this how we're comparing things now? It's this like, could have been a great countdown yeah. special of them doing all these, these various activities, and it all leads leads up to a fight at the end of it. Actually, that would be a lot of fun. Like, which one of these guys is a better driver? Which one of these guys cooks better? Which one of these guys tells jokes better? I think Michael Bisping probably does a few of those things better. But Kung Lee can fight, man. Kung Lee can fight, and apparently he's a big star. Also, our friend Russell Peters, who we had on the show, I've been told, is going to be walking Kung Lee out to the cage. Russell is a, is a brilliant, brilliant dude and a good guy, and they're good friends. But uh, so I think Kung Lee will be able to say, yeah, I have more stars. Power. The, the Asian market is an interesting one right now for the UFC because th they've run a number of shows now in Macau but failed to get into mainland China and you see somewhat the success now that 1FC is having announcing hey we've got Manny Pacquiao now as somebody that is going to at least have his name attached to this promotion and Mark Fisher has now been taken out Gary Cook who has been overseeing many of the different international markets is kind of being given that Asian market as well on top of his, his plate of uh, duties. It seems that the UFC is going to be making that further push into Asia right now. And I think Kung Lee is a big part of that, whether he is still fighting after Saturday or in a, sort of an ambassador role, because he does carry a lot of weight over there. Yeah, he does. As an actor, as a fighter, as a celebrity, he really does. It's a really interesting one. You just take a whole map and you put a red dot everywhere there's a million people. That whole region is just bleeding. Like, it's just so dense in population. There's so much money there. And when you look at all that, take another 
another one and put blue dots wherever the UFC is selling a lot of, you know, making a lot of money and, and they're not doing a lot there. So you look at one FC, you got to figure out at least one of the strategies is let's make this thing huge and then the UFC is going to have to buy us. And if they don't buy us, well, we'll already be being hugely successful in one of the biggest markets in the world. When you look at Kung Lee and Michael Bisping, I feel this is almost must win for both guys. And it's weird saying that for Kung Lee, who is technically coming off that win over Rich Franklin two years ago. But at this stage of the game, we saw Michael Bisping against Tim Kennedy. You're really looking at an important fight for both of these guys in terms of continuing their careers past this point. But they are two guys that still have a ton of name value that are very valuable for a card like this in Macau. I think it's a must win in the sense of Michael Bisping has been sitting around that I am one of the top 185 pound guys in the world for a long time. And his argument is only the juicers can beat me. You know, that's the kind of stuff he likes to say. And uh, he's, he really and, and, has. And believe me, he has found that picture of Kung Lee that <laughs> yeah. is circling online. Yeah. Hey man, there is all kinds of science and technology to help people get in better shape, get leaner, all that kind of stuff. But it is shocking when a guy in his sort of, easing into his mid-40s, isn't that kind of Can't shame? Can't accuse anyone, Never. of course, until there is a any kind of a yeah. proof. But, you know, you look at that picture, and Michael Bisping, listen, he has had his share of, of opponents in the past who stuff has come out about, and I think he just feels, man, the luck I have here. Yeah, today. well, what you can say for sure is 10 years ago, there were no men in their 40s who would look like that. Uh, athlete or none, it just didn't. But that doesn't mean that they're using performance-enhancing drugs. There's all kinds of other science and things that are there. But, uh, yeah, Bisping's going to say it. I think he probably has already said it. But, uh, yeah, I think Bisping needs to win to stay... Yes, this is one of these guys who can fight for the title. After that, if he were to lose, he becomes a name value guy that you put as a villain against anybody. Uh, Kung Lee, I think, in his 40s now, you lose this one, you're already a movie star, you're already an actor, you're progressing in that business. Uh, if this is something you're doing that's really fun to interrupt your real gig, that you can't do that in the UFC anymore. So we'll see. And you have value to the UFC in other areas as well. And one other quick thing is that here we have 21 fights coming up on Saturday, so stuff gets lost. But as you get closer it's like man ben saunders is coming back yeah. this weekend alex garcia and neil magny might be the sleeper fight of the weekend uh jordan Meehan, who uh, him and mike pyle could have a fantastic fight you saw you suddenly are just two days out and you look there's some really interesting stuff that doesn't quite get that focus technically great fights really interesting uh young fighters yeah magny versus garcia is a great fight Everything that you said is true, and you feel. And, and Ben Saunders, man, I'm really excited to see this guy back in the UFC. But you know, it's tough for these guys now. You've got 21 fights. If you're on the undercard on one of these, or you know, guys take a break in the middle of the day, or the story is Ben Saunders' return is really good, and that's the fourth or fifth biggest story of the day. It's tough on these fighters. Yeah, very difficult for a Royston Wee to get to that yeah. next level when you're buried on an undercard. We've okay. got more, and we'll be chatting about both of those cards leading into Saturday night. But more fight news now. Extras up now.